Many thanks for joining us on Bottom Line Africa today. Now, there has been a lot of growing interest, a growing foreign interest in Africa um, in, in, in the past decade, really, and it, it grows as the years come by. What would you attribute this interest to? Well, that's a very good question. Um, Africa is the only continent in the world that so far is very ripe. All the other continents have already been sort of exhausted. Okay. So there's so much interest in Africa because of natural resources, the demographic dividend that Africa enjoys, mm -hmm. the weather. Africa has everything that actually uh, investors from the world would actually be interested in. Right. Yes, the, the right climate in Africa and so on and so forth. And it, 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 it has a huge population of people, 1.2 billion, that's a huge market mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. think about it. And I think that offers an opportunity for those who are forward looking to see, okay, Africa is where things are going, it's very ripe, there's so many things that actually investors can benefit from Africa. All right, but despite that and despite all the investment that's been coming into Africa, the gap between the rich and the poor in the continent keeps widening. Um, let's talk about securing Africa's interest. In the wake of all these forums we're seeing now, currently the World Economic Forum going on in Switzerland, African leaders have come out now trying to secure Africa's interest when it comes to trade. What are we to expect from this forum? So, thank you very much. I think I, think I would like to talk to answer that question in the context of the the recently the, the buzzword in town the african continent of free trade area right and this 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 agreement tries to bring together africa and to have a cohesive one voice as a continent to be able to negotiate better deals with the other regions in the world mm -hmm. and i think world economic forum or the recently concluded uk african investment summit right. are very right platforms where actually africans can negotiate a better deal mm -hmm. but what we see now most of african countries they go individually countries presidents they go they try to negotiate right. deals individual as countries as opposed of going together as as, as one voice mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now what does trademark do to support such initiatives recently trademark signed an mou with african union and uh, we, are, we are actually going to support the implementation of the continental free trade area mm -hmm. because Trademark is at the heart of making sure, reducing barriers to trade, improving business environment, business competitiveness in this region. And we are doing it across so many countries. I would tend to think it's more of continental scale. We are not there yet touching all the countries, mm -hmm, but we are, mm -hmm. we, are quite, we are quite operating a number of countries. And now our, our goal is, as negotiations are still ongoing among countries, our goal is more of supporting the implementation because it's one thing to at the political level to visualize what needs to be done mm -hmm. and it's another thing to actually implement and actualize it right so trademark at the center of that and now how do all these feed into the bigger debate of inequality across different countries and across the region? You know, trade is, is a very politically sensitive subject. Right. And the reason for why trade is a politically sensitive subject because it has, empirically it has been shown that it has potential to actually address poverty and mm -hmm. inequality mm -hmm. issues mm -hmm. across countries. And now if we empower people to do trade, for example, within the CFTA, the goal is to expand the market, mm -hmm. make the market bigger. And who are the players who are benefiting from the market? So Trademark did a joint study with United Nations Commission for Africa. And what we show in that study, most of the, the positive impacts of CFTA will go to labor intensive sectors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which mainly employ women and youth. And you know, that, that sort of it increases income to women and youth mm -hmm. in those sectors. Which is Africa's most um, More, yes. strong, strongest demographic. E exactly. Really, um, as if, as if, the, if yes, you were to say yes, so. Yes. But even as you talk about that, the, the phrase being used at uh, the World Economic Forum is stakeholder capitalism, something yes. that will address you know issues like uh, political polarization, mm. issues of uh, um, disparities when it comes to tax and trading mm. across barriers. Yes. But how then can African countries, especially East Africa, with the problems we've seen within the East African countries, community um, really use stakeholder capitalism to boost the economy? Very good question. So I think, I think one thing that uh, Trademark has been doing is to help governments in this region, for example, to improve automation. Mm -hmm. So as I said, our, go our two key goals are reducing trade barriers and improve business competitiveness in the region. And we have done quite a number of in, 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 in interventions to support countries in the region, mm -hmm. from automation to standard harmonization. So if you are talking of the, the, the stakeholders capitalism that you're talking about, you need, for example, within East Africa, we need to come together as a regional bloc. And I'll tell you, uh, Based on the recent studies, East African bloc is actually doing much better compared to the rest of the regional right. blocs in the region. Mm -hmm. Now, and one could attribute by and large the contribution that Trendmark has been doing in this region in terms of supporting different initiatives from automating trade in the region to 
touching women who are engaged in trade, you know, uh, to building infrastructure. We have supported Port of Mombasa, mm -hmm. we have supported Port of Dar es Salaam, and we are going to continue to sort of create new initiatives on logistics sector to improve efficiency of, and movement of trade. How can we make trade uh, borderless, if you will? Mm -hmm. How can we make it easy? And uh, with that, we have been supporting countries in terms of how they can actually do that. Mm -hmm. However, you know, some of these things are political. Of course. And Trademark is not a political institution. We, we support when the government wants. We are more demanded driven. When the government say we want this, we sit down, we discuss what they want, and we help them fix it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh -huh. So now, there are politics involved, and we, 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 we let the government deal with the negotiations, and once they're ready, we say, okay, how can we help? Mm -hmm. And that's what uh, we've and been let's doing talk for about the past that, 10 years. Then, because even, even if we are to open the borders, we've seen the recent spat between um, Uganda and, and Kenya. Rwanda, to, and, for example, yeah. Tanzania and Kenya, Uganda yeah. and Kenya. There's been quite a lot. Of, and that, at the end of the day, it is the citizens who are trading across these borders that suffer. It is the businesses uh, that end up suffering. So how then can we manage political polarization? So one area which we've done, and this I will speak about the joint initiative that Trademark has started with United Nations, is to first create awareness. And how do you create awareness? We actually conduct joint research. You know, Trademark has operational ground experience on what needs to be done, and jointly with United Nations, we bring this uh, the expertise together. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are going to actually to launch a CFTA report across the East African region. And right. one of the goals we're going to do is to actually create that awareness so policymakers can understand. Because one of the reasons that we discover, sometimes this confusion becomes because people don't really understand what are the impacts on the ground. Mm -hmm. It's not in our place to lobby. We are not lobbyists. Our goal is to implement and get things done. Mm -hmm. But the best way to do so is also to inform policymakers. We do have programs that focus on public, 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 private advocacy mm -hmm. in some areas, dialogues in with private sector. So we bring all the key stakeholders together. We work very closely with the private sector in the region. We work very closely with non-state allied um, uh, agents in the, in the, in the region. Mm -hmm. And the goal, again, is to bring them together, to empower them, to give them knowledge. They are the ones then would go to the government and lobby and say, okay, this is not working. And then should we change the law now? Should we change here? Should we change that? Mm -hmm. And when things change, everything is moving forward as we would expect. As we would expect. So our role as trademark has been to create that information flux for people to understand, mm -hmm. to have the right forums, to, to sort of facilitate forums where people can discuss. Last year, we had an interview with KT, and we hosted a big event on sustainable inclusive trade, where mm -hmm. we brought people from all over the world. And there was a huge exchange of knowledge on what is working, what is not working. And with that, if the government sort of buys in, or this is not working, you get that stakeholder's engagement, and then what are the optimal solutions that can be designed? Right, and treatment let's, comes let's, in. I'm glad you that. brought up the issue of inclusive trade, because you also mentioned that Africa's demographic, really, the women and the youth, yeah. um, is seemingly what attracts foreign, um, you know, foreign investors, or part of what attracts foreign investors to the country. But that being said, the gap between the rich and the poor continues to rise. Yeah. So in that context, the prospects of achieving sustainable development goals or African Union development, um, you know, development agenda 2063 keep diminishing yes. by the year. Yeah. How can we salvage that? That's a big question, and I think I don't think I can answer that in an hour. Mm -hmm. But I would say, again, I'll speak, I'm, 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 I'm pro-trademark. Right. Okay, so I'll speak in terms of what trademark is doing so far to boost sustainability and inclusivity of trade mm -hmm. within this mm -hmm. region. We are take note that uh, our research shows that most of the traders, at, say, at the border level, 80% are women. Right. And they are disadvantaged in so many ways in terms of accessing information, in terms of understanding the rules of, that are involved in trade and so on. So we empower these women. We work closely with women associations in the region, uh, in Uganda, in Tanzania, and Kenya, to make sure that women have the right information. Right. What we believe in by empowering them, feeding them the right information. You know, once they're informed, they will be the, the ones to stand up for what is, is their right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that way, we believe in the long run, so this is just one shot. If you do cumulatively, in the long run, we expect that small, small, small bits, they will add up, and these women will be empowered enough and say, this is our right. I can give you a very good example. We recently supported a discussion on CFTA national strategy for mm -hmm, Kenya. Mm -hmm. And during that 
conversation, we brought in youth and women. We wanted the voice of youth and women to be heard and captured in the Kenyan national strategy. You understand? Right. We have done national strategies across the region. We do have the same message, making sure that even in the audience, we have the, the right stakeholders who are likely to be impacted by these policies. Mm -hmm. And we have seen quite a lot of turn up and the government also sort of being positive to engage the youth, to engage the women. And I believe through those platforms, we will be able to sort of engage both parties that are need to be to be brought to the table mm -hmm. and and address the issues that sort of will exacerbate inequality exacerbate why some are not accessing this accessing that i think it should start at the level where there are decent dialogues between the parties involved all right all right almost yes. out of time let's go back to the issue of the continental free trade area uh, with all the deals that are being signed uh, by different uh, heads of states uh, president Uhuru kenyatta for example in the uk africa summit signed more than 270 mm. uh, million shilling billion shillings so, worth yeah. of deals i yeah. believe uh, but these are just big numbers, really, yeah. to the common manenchi who's reading the headlines. Um, how does Trademark, or uh, how, for example, will the CFTA ensure that African countries then will work together in the wake of these deals being signed? Fantastic. So, so how can Trademark ensure that? So as I said, as I mentioned earlier, we have signed an MOU with African Union, and our goal is to actually support the implementation, mm -hmm. work with the, I can give a very good example of what we are actually part of our support, there's what we call uh, uh, boosting intra-African trade action plan, which was agreed by African Union in 2012. And part of our activities, part of our milestone in terms of supporting such implementation, mm -hmm. cuts across the different clusters that are captured within the BIT you know, trade policy, trade financing, information. And if you look at what Trademark is doing, we are pretty much touching on all those areas, automation, helping Kenya Revenue Authority, Rwanda Revenue Authority, Tanzania Revenue Authority, in different front, in different ways. And we believe by doing so, we are not only going to set stage for CFTA to take off, but we are supporting hands-on on what needs to be done. All so right. we are translating the vision to action. Mm -hmm. Our focus is more on the implementation. What can we do to help countries? What can we do to make trade borderless? What can we do to make trade simple, easy, and efficient? Mm -hmm such that we are able to reduce trade cost, we are able to reduce any frictions that could come about because of trade impediments, mm -hmm. and in the long run then boost welfare, address issues to do with poverty and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And of course yeah. the biggest issue there um, becomes taxes, uh, you know, exactly. cross-border taxes. I mean, even in Kenya, just yeah. trading across counties yes. um, bec becomes an issue. But as we wind up, how does Trademark Africa envision the rest of the year to be in terms of the African continental trade area? Well, we are, we are geared up. I will say that we are geared up and uh, I think our CEO is up to uh, supporting this and I think we've put it as a strategy mm -hmm. and as I said we have already signed an MOU with African Continental, uh, sorry, African, African Union. Right. We are working closely with other regional blocks. We have signed with, uh, MOU with Comesa. Mm -hmm. We work closely with EAC. So you can actually see we are trenching out. So this and means EAC member states can trade with Comesa, exactly, Comesa member states, exactly. without the trade barriers. Without the trade barriers. That's the, all, the essence of CFTA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That if we are all as one regional block, of course, what CFTA does is it respects the regional economic block. Mm -hmm. So if, say, e e EAC and Comesa, they have their own arrangement through the tripartite, EAC, Comesa, Sadi, mm -hmm. that will be respected. But then, for example, if you are a Kenyan, you want to trade with Uganda, sorry, with Nigerian, which is not anywhere in the regional block, that's mm -hmm. when CFTA becomes beneficial. Mm -hmm. And for us as Trademark, we wake up every day in the morning to make sure how can we make trade frictionless. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you mentioned that because we, yeah. we have to wind up. But we've seen even you know Kenya and in, in Uganda fighting about the fact that we've had Tanz or Tanzania rather Tanzanian mm -hmm. traders come to Kenya and take over jobs that Kenyans feel are their jobs, yes. creating friction really. When the borders have been opened, they yeah. can go to Tanzania and do the same thing. But how? can we then avoid such conflict, um, like the likes of xenophobia that we yeah. see in South Africa? South Africa. How can we uh, avoid that? So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a protocol, there's a protocol of free movement of people. Mm -hmm. One of the f tenants of uh, CFTA is free movement of people, such that Kenyans can easily navigate Tanzania, Tanzania can navigate Kenya, and so on and so forth. But uh, as I said, these are very politically sensitive decisions, and they need to be discussed at the political level, at the higher levels, where our leaders actually agree and see merit to it. I understand there's some sort of national sovereignty, protectionism, some sort of th that kind of trends. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
some countries or countries have that opportunity to sort of do that. Right. But I think for it is important, and this is where trademark comes in, creating that awareness. Why is it important to think of Africa made in Africa by Africa rather than say by Kenya, by Uganda, by Tanzania. Mm -hmm. And with that mentality, you want to be able to bring these people together. We would like to, I'm a Tanzanian by the way, mm -hmm. I work and live in Kenya. That's a good example. It should be easy for Kenyans to live and work in Tanzania. It should be easy for Kenyans and Ugandans and Rwandans to work. So that cross border of people, this is a political decision. Once it is at the political level and countries have ratified it, I don't think it's a problem to see people coming across. Right. And, and share their skills. All right, it is a conversation that needs a lot more time. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the show here. So much, uh, thank you so much for your time. Anthony Mveange, Director for Research at Trademark East Africa, speaking to us about the economic scramble for Africa and most importantly, the impact of the African free continental trade area. Uh, more details will come on that on our website at www.ktnnews.com. This is what on